Hello, fifth graders. Thank you for coming to watch this video called The Southern Colonies. Uh, today, I happen to have a friend with me that he might stay around. He might help later on. Who knows? But this friend that I have joining me today is Mr. Bear. Can everybody say hi, Mr. Bear? Mr. Bear, can you say hi to the fifth graders? Hi, fifth graders. Nice to meet you. So he might be here to learn because Mr. Bear loves learning all about social studies. And the colonies have always been something that has fascinated him. Right, Mr. Bear? Oh, I love the colonies. So he might help a little bit, but for now, I'm going to do most of the talking. So thanks, Mr. Bear. Okay, so in the southern colonies, uh, before we uh, talk about the southern colonies, I'd like to go back a little bit to remind you that there are actually many countries that are claiming land in the New World, but the big three are Spain, which will be down here in the southern part of North America, France in the northern part here, and then England along the shore here. But there are others that we learned about, like Holland had country uh, colonies over here, uh, uh, Sweden had colonies over here, but the big three are Spain, France, and England. So we go down in the notes here. We're going to talk a little bit about each colony that was formed. Maryland was started as a place for Catholics. Because remember we talked before over in England, they started the Church of England. They said everybody that lived in England had to belong to the Church of England. And Catholics were a part of Christianity, and England wanted to get away from the Catholic Church. That's why they started the Church of England. So people in England that were Catholic, they could get thrown in jail for that. So they wanted to start a colony as a place for Catholics to live. So they started Maryland. Uh, Protestants are another religious group, also a part of Christianity, um, that needed a place to live too. So they also went to Maryland. One of the problems was Protestants and Catholics did not always get along. Protestants are called Protestants because if you look in the word Protestant, there's the word protest. When you protest something, it means you are against it. And they were protesting the Catholic Church. So when both groups are living in Maryland, that is creating a lot of problems because the two groups don't like each other. And religion, even to this day, is one of the causes of many problems in the world. And it was a problem in Maryland. So we talked about this word tolerate before. When you tolerate, it means you understand that people are going to have different beliefs, different views, different opinions than, than you. But, and you respect those opinions. Just like sometimes Mr. Bear and I might not always agree. Like he thinks sleeping, hibernating all winter is a good plan. Where I think you know hibernating all winter sounds boring. But Mr. Bear likes that. But I understand that he has that different feeling. So I tolerate that and I respect that. So the people that were in charge of making laws for colonies during this time, we call an assembly. And it was... The job of the Maryland Assembly, so it's a group of men men in this uh, time period, come together to pass laws. Now, in parentheses, you see the word act. The act is the official name for a law. So when you pass an act, it means you're making a law. So the Assembly in Maryland passed a law called the Toleration Act. And it said, you can't fight each other. Everybody is welcome, no matter what religion you are, or you might not even have a religion, you are all welcome in Maryland. And that's why they called the Toleration Act, saying that everybody and bears need to respect each other and be tolerant of each other. So that's what Maryland formed as a safe place for religion. Then another one that was found in the southern colonies is Carolina. And you can see the first bullet point there. It says was founded and run by proprietors. That's a word we first learned when we were learning about the New England uh, uh, Colonies, so the proprietor. Mr. Bear, can you tell us what a proprietor is? Proprietor is an owner. So Carolina was owned by proprietors. Exactly. So a proprietor is somebody that owns a business. In this case, Carolina is going to be run by a business. In Carolina, there were large farms called plantations. So there was a picture in the textbook of a plantation. So here's part of it. And then down below is a little bit a little bit more of that picture. So you can see there's several different things you might find on a, on a plantation. You have a blacksmith. 
building where they work with, you know, iron, making horseshoes, things like that. A carpenter making things out of wood. You'll have to have a place for slave quarters. If you watched that video last week, you learn a little bit more about slave quarters. And then up here, you'll have the big house. That's where the, the family that owns the plantation will live. You'll have some sort of crop field, like a cash crop, whether it could be tobacco, rice, indigo. As you see in these notes here, it just said tobacco, rice, cotton, indigo. Some other examples of big houses here. Uh, you might have a stable, so where the horses will live, a laundry, you know, the clothes, washing and stuff, and then a vegetable garden, and then a flour mill. You can see the, the wheel here spun by the river, and inside that building are two large stones that will grind together, taking the wheat and grinding it down into a flour. So a lot of, our, lot of those farms in South Carolina. As I said, Carolina started out as one colony. The northern and southern parts of Carolina had several differences, so the people decided to split in 1729 and form North and South Carolina. Charlestown became the biggest city in the South. Charlestown would eventually become known as Charleston, so it would change its name a little bit later. So that's a little bit about South and North Carolina. Now the last one I want to talk about is Georgia, uh, which you read about here, debtors. A British general named General James Oglethorpe. So a general is the one that's in charge of soldiers. So they're ahead of an army. Well, he wanted, you can see the picture of him there. He wanted to start a colony in Georgia because he felt like it was a great place to make silk. Now, you may or may not know, but silk is actually comes out of, out of a worm. Um, you pull the silk out of the worm, they, and you can turn it into cloth or whatever else you want to make out of silk. He also wanted a place to send debtors. A debtor is somebody that owns or owns owes money. And in England, if you couldn't pay that money back, you could be thrown into debtor's jail. But General Oglethorpe thought, you know, instead of sending these people to jail because they owe money, maybe let's send them to this colony and have them work to pay back the money they owe. Well, King George II of Great Britain, he was in charge of the Great Britain at the time, agreed with Oglethorpe because he wanted a place to protect all the colonies from the Spanish in the south and the French in the west. So if we look at this map, it doesn't really show us Georgia, but Georgia will be right in this area where I'm moving the cursor. And he knew that Spain was down here, and then France eventually will also come down along the Mississippi River. So he wanted Georgia there to protect his other colonies from attack, if the Spanish attack or of the French attack. So that's why King George wanted it. So Georgia colonists created strong relationships with the local Native Americans and were more successful because of those relationships. So they worked hard instead of to not fight with the Native Americans or try to take their land. They tried to work with them. Uh, that plan that Oglethorpe had about debtors moving to Georgia, Mr. Bear, did that work or did the silk industry work? No, the silk industry did not work and a lot of debtors did not move to Georgia. So neither one of those ideas really worked out all that well. Uh, but people that weren't British moved to Georgia. So you're going to be seeing a lot of people that weren't from Great Britain. And Great Britain is made up of four smaller countries, England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Together they make up Great Britain. Um, so a lot of people from other parts of Europe were moving to Georgia because they had the promise of religious freedom. So in Georgia, you could be any religion you wanted, and they didn't treat you any different because of that. And as it says there, out of all the British colonies, Georgia had the most non-British citizens. At first, it was free of slaves, but soon the need for free labor arose and colonists began smuggling in slaves. That term smuggling, that's an illegal act. You're sneaking uh, things, or people in this case, into something when they shouldn't be there. Uh, eventually, they decide, you know, we have to make slavery legal. So slavery would become legal in Georgia, and eventually slavery would become legal in all 13 British colonies. Um, thank you for watching this video about the northern or about the southern colonies. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bear, for joining us today. Maybe we'll see him again in future videos. But can you say goodbye to the fifth graders there, Mr. Bear? Thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Again, please feel free to reach out with any questions. Take care. Bye.